630 WMAL. 837 on WMAL. Brian Neiman, Joe DeGeneva, former U.S. prosecutor in this morning. We're joined now by Father Jonathan Morris. You see him on Fox from time to time, travels the world, has seen a lot in his life, and has written a book called God Wants You to Be Happy. Father Jonathan, good morning. How are you? Good morning. Thanks for having me on. So I understand that the idea behind this book was you were wondering why so many people were turning to self-help gurus. I mean, it is a booming business, the self-help industry, and wondering why people were doing that and not necessarily turning to God. Is, Is that right? Exactly, and you know, and people have accused now this book of mine as being part of that self-help industry. <laughs> and quite honestly, um, I don't mind that in the sense that I think there's some wonderful things about the self-help industry um, that are very helpful, very simple things. Like I'm actually going to get up off the couch today and do something. Mm-hmm. And if you can have a book that inspires you to do that, you're well on your road toward at least a different level of happiness as you are now. But The problem with the self-help industry, or the the great majority of it today, and this is what I uh, critique heavily in the book, is um, a, I would say, a a new tradition of cutting ourselves off um, through this industry from any dependence on a higher power, any dependence on God. And so we read things like, you are the center of your own universe. You are the source of your own joy. You can figure it all out. Just do this, this, and this, and you will be happy. Quite honestly, if that were true, we would only need one of these books. And today we go and we see shelves and and whole sections of bookstores dedicated to this. And I think it's predominantly because there's been a choice, and it's been New Age inspired, to cut ourselves off from any dependence on God. Now, do you believe that today's would we see God in a different way today than we did maybe even 25 years ago? Are we less fearful of God? And you say that God wants you to be happy. Is there is any kind of difference in the way we see God today versus what we saw maybe 25 or even 50 years ago? Sure. Well, I think there's been a, uh, a couple of, I, w- I would say, uh, streams of thought in terms of relationship with God um, most recently. One was say our parents and and grandparents had this idea, especially if you're a Catholic or Jewish, but Mm -hmm. I would say a lot of the mainline Protestant traditions as well, that God was a cop, and he was waiting there to get you. If you did something bad, you were in trouble, he was going to get you. And so it was this fire and brimstone fear of God um, that was supposed to drive us into a a moral lifestyle. And quite, quite honestly, that might work to a certain degree, but it's not the type of happiness and freedom and joy that I think God wants for us. Well, that we see in the Bible that Jesus said, I've come that you might have life and life in abundance. That's the type of happiness I'm referring to in this book. Well, uh, Joe DeGeneva here, Father. Nice to have Joe, you nice, on the show. Nice uh, it's, it you. seems to me that the old uh, philosophy that you're alluding to was the, the fear and guilt instrument mm-hmm. by which you tried to control behavior and make people understand the difference between right and wrong, all of which was a, a very laudable goal. In other words, there are good things, there are bad things, there's good, there's evil, there are the Ten Commandments. And then it seems to me that that got caught up in this whole thing of controlling people's lives to the extent that fear and guilt became more powerful than the love and the joy that you're yeah. talking about. Yeah, I would say so. And then, of course, there is a good... Um, element of guilt. We could, I call yes. that godly sorrow, right? If I punch you in the nose, if I don't feel any guilt, then, you know, I'm a, I'm a, I've got a problem, a big problem, right? Mm-hmm. And there are people in society who don't feel that, that guilt. But another type of guilt that I think that we were fell into was this kind of self-centered, um, woe is me, self-pity. Oh my gosh, I'm in big trouble. I can't get out of it because I'm a sinner. That's not the type of life in abundance that um, God um, wants for us. And that's why I titled this book, God Wants You Happy, that God is in our, on, on our side in this pursuit of happiness that all of us have. Well, that you know, it's pretty easy to fall into that when the government tells everybody they're a victim. Well, yes, and, and uh, that they're going to take care of us, right? right. We don't need yeah. churches, we don't need family, we don't need local communities, we need the federal government. Um, and if we just uh, recognize our victim or victimhood, then uh, we're going to depend on somebody else to make us happy. 
Um, and that's not the type of personal responsibility that we see over and over again in the scriptures and in real life. Well, let, me, let me continue with that trend because uh, Speaker John Boehner will be uh, giving the commencement address at Catholic University, and apparently about 70 Catholic scholars that sent a letter to uh, Speaker Boehner essentially saying that the Republican budget um, ignores the Church's social teachings. Is, is that true? Is that accurate? Is that fair to Speaker Boehner? Well, it's true that the, that letter was sent. Um, it was sent. It was uh, promoted by a number of professors at Catholic University, and they got a whole bunch of other Catholic um, professors, or at least professors at Catholic universities, to sign on to this, uh, cr- uh, critiquing Senator Boehner, saying, hey, listen, you, you say you're Catholic, but you're going to make all these budget cuts, and it's going to hurt the poor. And I think what's most notable about that letter is that the president of Catholic University of America did not sign on to it. None of the bishops signed on to it. Um, the, the bishops who actually run Catholic University of America, that's the Conference of Catholic Bishops, none of them signed on to it. What we see here is an important I, I would say, call to conscience of every politician that we don't put disproportional weight when we're cut, cutting budgets on the poor. But that's not to say that any budget cut that affects the poor is somehow not Catholic or not Christian or ungodly. Um, what, if you don't have any money, how are you supposed to pay the bills of these programs that you, that you have going? Mm-hmm. Um, another, I think, premise that's, that is very wrong that they don't bring up in this, in this letter um, or they, they refer to it very, very uh, tangentially, is that the federal government is not the only one who's supposed to take care of the poor. In fact, they're the, the last ones. They're, they're the ones who are supposed to create a safety net where families are taking care of their, of their loved ones and they fail, then where do they go to? Well, then it should be the church communities and the other local institutions. And then it should be local government. And then finally, when all else fails, the federal government needs to come in and say, we're going to help those who can't help themselves or who cannot get help from other people. That's what we call the principle of subsidiarity. Mm. Um, I have to ask you, because we have had uh, a lot of talk about it this week, the Christian radio host uh, Harold Camping says that a rapture will take place on May 21st on Saturday. Um, what, what do you think about that? Well, it's uh, interesting. And one of the Catholic uh, stations is called the Catholic Channel um, on Sirius and XM Radio. Mm-hmm. And I believe invited him to uh, do an interview on May 22nd, the day after. Um, and, of course, he said he was uh, going to be unavailable on the day after. Um, <laughs> you know, I, I think this, it's rather sad. You know, I was, I was in Union Square the other day. Um, and all these young people who are part of this movement he's starting are passing out these brochures. The end of the world is happening this Saturday, May 21st, Judgment Day. What's sad about it is not that it couldn't happen. I mean, the, the point here is that, according to the Scripture, no, n- nobody knows the day or the hour. What's sad here is that people have put their faith in one man's interpretation. Mm-hmm. And therefore, when May 22nd happens and there's no worldwide rolling earthquake that's supposed to happen, then what do, what do these young people think? What about all these people who put their faith? And this is, this is the, the, the very negative side of um, or the result, I would say, of dividing or separating faith and reason. If you cut off your reason because you have faith, that's not real faith. That's radical fundamentalism. And that's what we're seeing here, is somebody who has convinced himself that his interpretation is the only valid one because he's had a direct connection with God. Yeah. Um, maybe it's happened, yeah. but a lot of other people before him have said the same things, and, they were and wrong, it hasn't obviously. happened. Well, Father Jonathan, it's great to have you on the show. The book is called God Wants You to Be Happy, and you can also find more information at fatherjonathan.com. Thanks for being on the show. I appreciate it. Yeah, you're welcome. Thanks.